I'll start with the uh, statistics on uh, where we stand in the pan pandemic today. Uh, we now have a total number of cases of 26,746. That's an increase of 946 cases in the last uh, reporting period. The total deaths stand at 927, which is an increase of 36. Uh, total tests are 180,084, and as the governor mentioned, that was, uh, includes the 8,845 tests in the last 24-hour period. Um, the number of African-American cases that we have is 4,337, which is about 23% of the cases for which we have demographic information on race and ethnicity. Uh, the Latinx uh, cases number 7,711, which is 43% of that same uh, denominator of uh, cases with race and ethnicity. Uh, in terms of deaths, uh, African-American deaths are at 201, which is 25% of the deaths, uh, and the Latinx deaths are at 73, which is about 10%. As the governor mentioned, as we move into phase one, it will be critical for us to uh, continue to contain the spread of this disease through uh, testing and ramping that up, identifying cases as they present, isolating those cases from other people, and contacting the folks who have come into uh, contact with that case and uh, possibly have been exposed to the disease. As the governor mentioned, we are processing currently about 3,000 uh, applications. Uh, we will be hiring supervisors in regional areas for this new uh, additional uh, workforce of contact tracers who will augment the some 604 uh, contact tracers that we currently uh, have in place. We plan to step up that workforce to uh, near um, 1,300 uh, people across the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, as I mentioned previously, what this represents is about uh, having 15 contact tracers for every 100,000 people uh, in the population. This is a number that we got from the uh, researchers at Harvard University who published the roadmap to ending the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, in which they said that you needed a minimum of at least that amount, somewhere between 15 to 30 uh, contact tracers per 100,000. We will start at that 15 per 100,000 and ramp up from there uh, as needed. Thank you. you. We'd be glad to take your questions. Contact tracing. I was hoping to clarify what will happen when you identify the contacts of the cases that we're picking up through testing. Um, you know, when these tracers find a contact sure. of a positive case, will those people then be able to be tested? Will they be required to be isolated? What happens? Yes. Yeah, so the question is, how does the contact tracing process move forward? And would you like to have yeah, address? Thank you. And Dr. Forlano may correct me if I miss something. Um, when we, when we identify uh, uh, someone who's a contact, that's someone who may have been exposed to the disease, uh, we first of all want to find out whether or not they're feeling well, what their symptoms are, and so on. Uh, if it appears through that um, conversation that they're actually symptomatic and, and need testing to find out whether or not they have COVID-19, then we would arrange for that testing to occur. And um, if they are a primary contact with significant exposure uh, to the index case, uh, then we would uh, uh, ask them to self-quarantine and then follow up with them through that 14-day period to ensure that they um, don't develop symptoms and, and need care. For primary contact? I, what I mean by primary contact is um, if I'm a case and you and I have been standing within six feet of each other talking and so on for longer than 10 minutes, you would be a contact who we want to um, self quarantine. But if you then spent time with uh, Henry, Henry, that secondary person wouldn't be someone that we would uh, isolate. 